we have prepared this comprehensive tutorial for you, which includes all topics related to Microsoft Paint usage. And the tutorial consists of a total of 24 main topics. To get the most out of this training, following this content and our previous and subsequent or other related trainings that we publish in series will help you understand and achieve much more. It is often referred to as Imis Paint or Microsoft Paint. It is a free graphics program available to users by default on computers with Windows operating systems. Paint, one of the most frequently used applications on Windows, is a simple and practical graphics editor with a variety of uses. With the tools in this application, you can quickly edit images or create amazing artwork. When you're done, you can save and share your files in almost any format. You will see that we go into more detail in the general introduction section. But for now, let's not waste time and start exploring the software's interface hands-on. To introduce the software step-by-step, -step, we will open the Microsoft Paint application. For this, we type the name of the application in the Start menu. If you have already used it, open it by clicking on the brush painting palette icon that will appear in the menu when you type the first letters. When the paint application opens, we are greeted with a simple interface and a white background. From the top right corner of the application, you have the resize, minimize and close options available in almost every program. There are scroll bars that can move up and down and right or left that help us navigate our canvas. The zoom in and zoom out slider at the bottom right allows us to zoom in and out of the image in percentage units. At the bottom left, in the status bar, our canvas size is given in the corresponding unit. In the far corner, there is an information section showing the coordinates of the mouse cursor in the corresponding unit. Our default unit is in pixels, when moving the mouse cursor on the canvas, you will instantly see the coordinates of the mouse cursor in pixels. Above is the title bar, where the current name of our study appears. In general, if we need to name the sections where the tools are located under the main menu tab, there is the toolbox with basic tools such as clipboard, drawing tools, pencil eraser brush. Right next to it are the shape tools and the size and thickness options of the selected tool and finally our color palette and our panel for editing color properties. In the upper left corner is the file menu, which you can find in almost every program. The first lines of the file menu contain options such as open a new or existing image file, save work, save as. As you can see from the save as option, almost all image recording file formats are available, including some of the most common ones. The menu continues with printer-related commands, printing and preview options. We can transfer image files from a scanner or camera. We can send the existing image file as an attachment to an email message or set the existing image file as a desktop background. Under the file menu, there is an option to close the program and an about section as well as options such as feature settings. Within the image properties setting, there is a section where you can specify the height and width of the canvas, that is the size of the canvas, and different options such as black and white or color, depending on the unit preferences. The resolution is normally 120 dpi. Preferably, we set the height in pixels to 1080 and the width in pixels to 1920. At the top left, there is a customizable quick access toolbar where the floppy disk option can be thought of as a shortcut to the save option in the file menu. We can add or remove printer and other options from the quick access toolbar. The most commonly used ones are usually the undo or redo last action shortcut and the save options. At the top is the title bar we mentioned earlier, which contains the current name of our work. In general, we have already mentioned the main menu tab and before entering the view tab, we make a small change to our canvas with the pen tool. Now let's examine the view tab in a little more detail. In addition to zooming in and out of the current image with the magnifying glass symbols, there are also options to zoom in 100%, that is, to full size. In the view section, we have commands to display the image full screen and as a thumbnail. 
In the Show or Hide section, options are available for displaying the status bar and grid lines as well as rulers. Preferably, we activate the rulers. Once we have maximized the zoom, a coordinate system where we can control pixel levels at an atomic level could provide more visual aids for navigation as well as rulers that give us the sharpness of grid lines and pixel coordinate information from the status bar. The thumbnail window is a great tool, very useful and essential for some jobs, which can be activated when our canvas is zoomed in and shows us the image not fully enlarged in a separate window. Once the thumbnail window is activated, we can define how much space it will display and position it freely by drag and drop. The thumbnail window closes automatically when my canvas is normal size or smaller than normal size. We will explain the benefits of grid lines and all the other tools in much more detail in our future tutorials. The image tools under the main menu tab allow us to perform many image manipulation operations such as cutting, selecting and cropping on the whole image or on selected images. We can resize, rotate, orient and more the entire canvas or a selected image fragment. In the brushes section, there are many brushes of different styles. We can change their thickness and many other properties, which we will explain in more detail later. We select the star from the shape section and create it on the canvas after determining the size as we want. If we wanted to, we could have prepared it in full color at the beginning, but this time we chose to color it with the bucket tool afterwards to show a different way. The Shapes section offers as many ready-made shapes, as well as many different shape creation tools. Rather than this tutorial, which aims to introduce the interface in general, we will provide detailed step-by-step -step tutorials for each of them separately in our future tutorials. The last section of the main menu tab has two separate color boxes, containing foreground and background colors, a color palette containing most of our colors, and a very detailed color editing panel that opens when we click next to it. When the color editing panel is opened as a window, there are settings and tools for creating and editing almost unlimited colors, which we can add to our color palette and artwork as we wish. For example, to show a simple example here, we have edited and custom defined a color with a pink tone, and we will import it into our palette to use it in our work. To try it immediately, we pour our color on the white area with the bucket tool and undo it with the undo hotkey combination CTIL plus Z. After replacing our second color with the special color we created, we create our rounded rectangular shapes filled with colors painted with different brush styles. We can view the full screen of our work from the view section we showed you earlier or with the F11 key shortcut. To save our work, we can select the Save options from the File section or the Save icon on the Quick Access bar. Apart from all this, if we exit without saving our modified file, the program will ask us if we want to save it as a warning, and at this stage, we can save and exit if we wish. When the Save screen opens, we can specify the file name, the location to save and the file extension, that is the file type. We named our file New Paint V1 formatted it as PNG and saved it on the desktop. So far, we have superficially explained the interface of MS Paint software. In the following lessons, we will show you the details of all these tools and their purpose one by one, step by step. When we open the MS Paint program, we are greeted by a clean blank canvas. Canvas is simply the name of the surface on which we draw or paint. Our drawing and painting takes place only within the canvas area. If we have used the program before, the size of the canvas, that is height and width, is in the last setting we used. We moved a little bit away, and canvas is exactly this area that we have framed in red. In the previous lesson, 
We introduced the scroll bars we used to navigate the canvas and shared some other important information about the canvas. Now, let us briefly recall. There are scroll bars that can move up and down and right or left that help us navigate our canvas. The zoom in and zoom out slider at the bottom right allows us to zoom in and out of the image in percentage units. At the bottom left, in the status bar, our canvas size is given in the corresponding unit. In the far corner, there is an information section showing the coordinates of the mouse cursor in the corresponding unit. Our default unit is in pixels. When moving the mouse cursor on the canvas, you will instantly see the coordinates of the mouse cursor in pixels. Above is the title bar, where the current name of our study appears. In the upper left corner is the file menu, which you can find in almost every program. Under the file menu, there is an option to close the program and an about section, as well as options, such as feature settings. Within the image properties setting, there is a section where you can specify the height and width of the canvas, that is the size of the canvas, and different options such as black and white or color, depending on the unit preferences. The resolution is normally 120 dpi. Preferably, we set the height in pixels to 1080 and the width in pixels to 1920. Yes, after following our reminders from the information we shared earlier, let's go to the image properties again to resize our canvas. As you can see, our current canvas has a pixel width of 2048 and a height of 1080 pixels. We set the width to 1920 pixels and the height to 1080 pixels. Earlier, we showed how to zoom in and out of our canvas. Now let's show the shortcut option. We can use the key combination CTRL and mouse wheel to zoom in and out of the canvas. In the previous lesson, we showed you other ways to zoom in and out and the option to see the canvas in full screen. In addition to all this, let's briefly recall some other important tools useful when using the canvas, such as rulers and guidelines. And before entering the view tab, we make a small change to our canvas with the pen tool. Now let's examine the view tab in a little more detail. In addition to zooming in and out of the current image with the magnifying glass symbols, there are also options to zoom in 100%, that is, to full size. In the view section, we have commands to display the image full screen and as a thumbnail. In the show or hide section, options are available for displaying the status bar and grid lines as well as rulers. Preferably, we activate the rulers. Once we have maximized the zoom, a coordinate system where we can control pixel levels at an atomic level could provide more visual aids for navigation as well as rulers that give us the sharpness of grid lines and pixel coordinate information from the status bar. The thumbnail window is a great tool, very useful and essential for some jobs which can be activated when our canvas is zoomed in and shows us the image not fully enlarged in a separate window. Once the thumbnail window is activated, we can define how much space it will display and position it freely by drag and drop. The thumbnail window closes automatically when my canvas is normal size or smaller than normal size. We will explain the benefits of grid lines and all the other tools in much more detail in our future tutorials. With the reminder out of the way, we make a few random drawings on the screen with the pen tool to make our changes visually more obvious and easy to understand. Now we will show different ways to expand our canvas and make it bigger or smaller. To expand and contract the canvas, we hold down the left mouse button and drag the white box in the corner of the canvas. As you can see, the width and height pixel value changed immediately. Now we use the resize option to halve the size of the canvas while keeping the aspect ratio. We increase it by 200%, up to two times, to bring it back to the same size. Also, by removing the option to keep the aspect ratio, we reduce the width of the canvas by 50% in percentage terms, that is by half. 
There is a resized tile in the center of the canvas edges, except the canvas corner. To increase the width of the canvas, we expand the box on the right edge by drag and drop. The resize command allows us to resize on a per pixel basis or as a percentage. After selecting the pixel option, we set the width to 1920 pixels and the height to 1080 pixels without aspect ratio that is independently. Thus, we have shown the options for resizing our canvas. To show another example of the practical benefits of rulers and guidelines, let's first clean our canvas and then make a few random drawings to make it easier to track changes. This is a full screenshot of our drawing. And when we deactivate the rulers option, it will disappear from the edges of the canvas. We activate the rulers again. We zoom in and go to the top left corner of our canvas. As we mentioned earlier, the position of the mouse cursor and its pixel coordinates are displayed in the status bar below. Note that the pixel coordinate information is only shown when hovering over the canvas. We're going to make changes at the atomic level, that is, at the pixel level. So we're in the very corner and we're working on the closest option so that it's more visible. And now we've also turned on the grid lines, including the rulers. It will be easier to understand if you think of the whole canvas as a two-dimensional matrix coordinate system. With a pencil of the finest line setting, we place one pixel of black paint at the 0, 0 coordinate. That is the first pixel in the very corner. As you place the pixels one by one from left to right and top to bottom, you can also track the pixel coordinates in the status bar below. Now we place a pixel point at pixel coordinates such as 10 at 10, 20 at 20 and 30 at 30. Likewise, you can observe the pixel coordinate both in the rulers and in the status bar below. Finally, we finish by writing the most important focal point of our subject on our canvas with the brush tool. We talked about it in detail in our previous lesson. Canvas is simply the name of the surface on which we draw or paint. To help us better understand the magnifying glass tool, we will create various shapes and drawings in different styles on our blank canvas. In previous lessons, we talked about how there is more than one way to zoom in and out of our canvas. Another way is to zoom in and out using the zoom level slider bar at the bottom right of the application window. The most practical shortcut for zooming in and out is to use the key combination CT aisle and mouse wheel. Today, we will try to explain all this as well as the magnifier tool and its features, which provide a more specialized way to zoom in and out of the canvas. Unlike other zoom options, the magnifying glass tool allows you to zoom in or out by focusing on a specific area. Because the magnifier tool zooms by focusing, it allows you to zoom in on the selected area without moving away or disappearing from the zoomed area. When using the magnifier tool, you can zoom in with a left mouse click or zoom out with a right mouse click. Note that the zoom distance size in the zoom level slider bar changes automatically when we use the magnifier tool or zoom in and out. In particular, we can use the magnifier tool to directly select and focus an area and work on it in a detailed and precise way. As we mentioned earlier, we can use the right mouse button with the magnifier tool selected to zoom in and out on the canvas. As always, we start with a blank and clean canvas. Canvas is simply the name of the surface on which we draw or paint, and all our drawing and painting takes place only within the canvas space. To better explain the tutorial on free navigation, scroll bars and keyboard shortcuts on the canvas, we will draw a few quick context sketches on our canvas that will make it easier to follow. In previous tutorials, we have shown you many different ways to move closer and further away from the canvas and many different ways to move around the canvas.
In this tutorial, we will introduce different features, such as more controlled navigation with keyboard shortcuts. One of our first examples is zooming into the canvas with the control and page up key combination. To move away from the canvas, we use the key combination control and page down as a keyboard shortcut. It is very practical to move or scroll left or right on the canvas, as we have already shown with the scroll bars. And now we will show you shortcuts with the keyboard, including cross directions. For the right direction, we use the key combination control and right. And for the left direction, we use the opposite key combination control and left. To move up or down, the control and up or control and down key combinations will help. It is possible to pan or move the image in diagonal directions. For this, we use combination shortcuts with both directions together. Left uses the key combinations control and up and left for the up diagonal, while right uses the key combinations control and down and right for the down diagonal. Similar logic applies to scrolling and navigation in all other directions. If we include the shift key in addition to all these key combinations, scrolling and navigation will become faster. To give an example, we use key combinations control and shift together with up and left to scroll faster to the top left diagonal. The pen tool helps us to freehand draw according to the selected thickness settings. The size panel has for settings from thin to thick. For a better understanding, we draw sample lines on our canvas with four different thickness settings. However, the thickness setting is not limited to just for options. To access more thickness options, we can use the key combination control and plus as a shortcut. With the pen tool selected, we thicken our lines with the key combination control and plus and thin our lines with the key combination control and minus. For a better understanding of this topic, we will present all thickness options in an accelerated format. As you can see, after one level, we reach the limit of our thickness setting. The minimum thickness setting is one pixel. Let's create black rock-like images with the pen tool at its thickest and demonstrate another function of the pen tool. The other function of the pen tool is to draw with a secondary color or background color. On a completely white canvas, if the second background color is also selected as white, it will perform a kind of erase operation. With different thickness settings and our second color white, we create a different pattern by erasing some of the black shapes with long wavy lines. We add a gray color to our palette that is lighter than the lightest gray. We will use the pen tool to draw a cube and a very simple fountain pen drawing. But first, we need to organize our canvas a little more and record the stage of the work. We've already mentioned that. We can also use the pen tool as an eraser using the right mouse button with the second color of the pen tool set to white on the boldest setting to erase the lines we don't want in bulk. In the pen tool, we can also use white erase as a kind of sculptural shaving or two-dimensional modeling tool to remove excess parts. We can use the selected background color with the right mouse button and the selected foreground color with the left mouse button. Details like our mouse movement and line thickness directly affect our style. We organized our canvas space a bit more for a cube and a very simple fountain pen painting. With the pen tool selected, we roughly draw the positions and dimensions of our pen and cube shape with the thickest setting and lightest shade of gray in our palette. We completed the sketches with the lightest gray color in our palette. Using the pen tool as an eraser, we now make this sketchy shape a little more elegant and save it. First, to complete the cube drawing, we choose a darker shade of the lightest shade of gray in our palette and the thinnest, one pixel thick setting of the pen tool and start outlining the cube image with research lines 
and scribbles. In the next step, we will make the edge lines of the cube more pronounced and give it a simple shading effect. To do this, we will go over the necessary areas and highlight them with dark grey tones and finally with black lines. We apply this algorithm step by step in the fountain pen drawing. And finally, using the same methods, we create and draw the inscription pen tool. We make the border lines and contours of the fountain pen drawing a little thicker and do some hatching. You can see that when we play our work that we have recorded in certain stages in series in a slide sequence, the moving pictures that are created turn into a simple animation. Step by step, it can be turned into a short animation where we show the development and evolution of this work. We plan to publish content on this topic and more in our future trainings. We will create our fountain pen and cube drawings in a different way, again, using the pen tool. This time we're going to use the method we mentioned earlier more intensively and use the pen tool as a sculptor's tool to carve and shape the shape in more detail. We will make erasures, additions and edits to the shape to make the fountain pen form more distinct. By applying different thicknesses, we continue the process step by step until the shape we start to create is a thinner, elegant and distinct fountain pen. We will use the same methods to create a special style of text. As with the previous work, we save our work at certain stages. Again, we turn it into a simple animation or a series of moving pictures that we can play in series on a slide. The eraser is located under the Tools tab in the main section. We can erase it with the eraser tool or change the color according to the background color. First, on our blank canvas, we freely draw the letter E with the pen tool. We have deliberately overextended some parts of the letter E and now we will remove the extra parts with the eraser tool. If we change the background color or the second color to black, the eraser can now work as if it were painting black on a surface other than black. Thanks to this feature, we can use the eraser tool for alternative painting and color changes, which we will show in the next step. We can also use the eraser tool as a sculptor's tool, a tool for two-dimensional modeling, shaping, image manipulation, as we demonstrated with the pen tool in the previous lesson. The eraser tool has four settings ready in the size section and the size settings are, of course, not limited to this. To access more size options, we can use the key combination control and plus as a shortcut. With the eraser tool selected, we increase its size with the key combination control and plus and decrease it with the key combination control and minus. To show the erasers, the eraser tool and its dimensions more effectively, we cover part of our canvas with a black foreground color. For this, we first make it completely black with the bucket tool and then collapse it with the box in the center of the far right edge of our canvas. By the way, our background color is white, so when we expand our canvas again, it will automatically fill the expanded empty space with the background color, which is an alternative deletion method. Now we can start showing all the dimensions of the eraser tool, one below the other, starting from the top left corner of our canvas. We zoomed the screen at the last level and activated the grids in the view section to see the pixels more clearly. As we mentioned before, with the eraser tool selected, we increase its size with the key combination, control and plus. Our step-by-step -step iterative process continues and we can now show all thickness options and sizes in an accelerated format to save time. After a level, the size will no longer increase. For the eraser tool, there is a size scale from a minimum of one pixel 
to a maximum of 50 pixels. Earlier we mentioned that we can use erase operations to manipulate shapes or images. For different image manipulations, we can perform basic operations such as adding or subtracting and deleting from the shape. We can record our work up to this point if we wish. Next, we will provide examples of many more different features and uses of the eraser tool. We change the second color, also known as the background color, to yellow and make some scribbles with the eraser tool. We continue to assign other colors as background colors. The most important point for the eraser tool is that it works according to the background color. Changing color with the right mouse button only affects the foreground color. But if we erase with the left mouse button, it will erase whatever color is on the surface. If the surface is already the same as the background color, it will remain the same as there will be no change, but it can erase all other colors. When we select and move or completely delete a region with the selection tools, the empty space will automatically be filled with the second color, also known as the background color. Let's do a few small examples in the lower section. We will draw and prepare some basic shapes on our canvas to illustrate the different uses of the eraser tool. We use the eraser tool to draw and shape a large letter R using the methods we've just described. We place other letters and shapes that have been colored or will be colored later on our canvas. So, as promised, at this stage, we can provide more easily understandable examples of the different types of use of the eraser tool. For the color change, we choose a different background color with the eraser tool and create patterns inside the circle we created. In the same way, we can apply these operations to other letters and shapes. Since the color change takes place according to the color in the foreground color and the background color, the change takes place with whatever our background color is, and we can do this without disturbing the areas outside the foreground color. We use the right mouse button to change the color. We can erase the black contour lines of our multicolored small circular shape with a color change without touching the other colors. To do this, with the black background color selected, that is the target color is black, we change the background color to white, the color to be changed, and then delete it with the right mouse button. To change or manipulate a specific target color, even if the target color is among many colors, the color changing feature of the eraser tool provides a lot of practicality and convenience. As in previous studies, we recorded our work in specific phases. We can present our phases as a simple animation that is a series of moving pictures that we can play in series on a slide. Before moving on to the brush tools in turn, we will talk about their similarities and differences with the pen tool. In previous lessons, we have shown that the pen tool increases in circular shape as its size increases, and the same is true for brushes. The most important differences in brushes are that they help us draw more consistently by giving us a size preview before painting, and each brush has its own characteristics such as style, transparency, and anti-aliasing. When working with the basic brush, transparency and softening occur automatically at and around the borders of pixels. The pen tool has no anti-aliasing and draws with hard edges, just like the eraser tool. In previous tutorials, we have talked about how to draw with the eraser tool or its different features. The eraser tool and the pen tool are very similar. The main difference is that the eraser tool is square and the cursor gives a square preview of the erase operation, which helps us to make more consistent operations. We can also erase with the eraser tool 
or change the color of the designated surface according to the background color. We can also use the brush tools as a drawing or sculpting tool, two-dimensional modeling, sculpting, image manipulation tool, as we have shown in previous lessons with the pen and eraser tool. As with the pen and eraser tools, the brush tools also have presets in the size section, and the size settings are, of course, not limited to this. To access more size options, we can use the key combination, Control and Plus as a shortcut. With the brush tool selected, we increase its size with the key combination, Control and Plus, and decrease it with the key combination, Control and Minus. Now we can start showing all the dimensions of the brush tools, one below the other, starting from the top left corner of our canvas. Our step-by-step -step iterative process continues, and we can now show all thickness options and sizes in an accelerated format to save time. After a level, the size will no longer increase. There is a size scale for the size from a minimum of one pixel to a maximum of 50 pixels. In the brushes section, there are special pens and brushes in different styles. We will try to explain the calligraphy brush with right and left cut tip by showing it step by step with examples. Calligraphy brush, as the name suggests, is a different tool that helps you write calligraphic writing. Calligraphy brushes are right and left diagonal and both serve basically the same function. After quickly presenting and demonstrating the differences of the brushes with short drawings one after the other, we will do a few small examples of basic drawings in turn. After the calligraphy brushes, we will present a basic brush and then an example of a natural pencil. We continue with the crayon and then the spray contour. If you pay attention to the most well-known marker pane, the first layer line is transparent and becomes opaque as additional layers are added. We can use the marker for different drawings besides marking. The last two most commonly used artistic brushes are watercolor and oil paint brushes. Wasting no time, we create references from the ready-made lettering tool to offer small examples of calligraphy brushes and start drawing right away. For the remaining seven different brushes, we can observe their differences by drawing a cube respectively. For each cube drawing, we choose the finest size setting to prepare our basic research lines and the basis for our sketches. When drawing the cubes, we go over the corners and edges to make them more distinct. Finally, for each cube we create a shadow silhouette on the side. Since our drawings are for demonstration purposes and are in series, there may be small mistakes. We update the canvas placements in terms of position every now and then, thanks to the select and move feature. In this way, we have shown the basic drawing characteristics of all brushes and the slight differences between them. The next topic we will show is the color and color mixing properties of brushes. Let's first give an example of a watercolor brush. When we start drawing without lifting the watercolor brush on the canvas, it offers a limited and realistic drawing effect where the paint runs out after a while. If we hold down the left mouse button on the watercolor brush, and draw for a while without releasing it, the line can continue and then end. Each time we click the left mouse button, we fill the brush with color. Let's identify the orange colors that will occur between the red and yellow tones, sample them with the color picker tool and turn the blend into a color gradient effect. We show the color transitions between turquoise and yellow with a natural pencil or marker. The natural pencil line has the ability to keep drawing continuously and without interruption as long as the left mouse button is pressed. With an oil paint brush, we will bring out the purple tones between red and indigo. The oil paint brush is discontinuous, similar to a watercolor brush, so when we hold down the left mouse button and draw for a while without releasing it, the line can continue and then end. 
Each time you click the left mouse button, the brush fills with color. We have a special method to give a 3D effect or create a special brush tip. Let's talk about it briefly with an example. Thanks to the method we will use, we can use a star brush or star shape as a stamping tool that marks our canvas. The method is quite simple. First, we choose the star from the ready-made shape tools. Then we set the fill and outline brush drawing style to watercolor brush and the colors to green and indigo blue. We create a small star with the settings applied to the bottom right corner of our canvas and then turn it into a transparent selection with the selection tool. Of course, first we need to change the background color to white. When it becomes transparent, we make a copy of it so that we can use it over and over again until we make a new copy each time. When the background of the copied star shape is transparent and selected and we drag it with the shift key pressed and the left mouse button pressed, it will automatically draw successive star drawings. If we move the mouse fast, the distance between the stars widens. If we move the mouse slowly, the distance shrinks. This process is similar to the logic of brushes. In this way, we can develop different basic brush tips to create images and special effects. As with previous work, we recorded our work in stages, presenting it as a simple animation that is a series of moving pictures that we can place serially on a slide. We open MS Paint and go to the top left corner of our clean blank canvas. We will talk about primitive basic shapes and their general and specific characteristics. We will start with the line shape tool. The starting point is placed on the canvas with the left mouse button to create the line shape. Then, with the second point, the line is extended to a more distant point on the canvas to determine its length and direction. If we click on the right mouse button, instead of selecting the second point with the left mouse button, the line creation is cancelled, and this is the same when creating other shapes. In short, pressing the right mouse button during creation means cancelling. Another important feature of our line tool is that it can create lines at 45 degree angles in eight different directions, vertical, horizontal, and diagonal. To create a 45 degree angle difference after the first point is set, it is enough to hold shift key before the second point and move it in the desired direction. If the angle and length of the line we want to create, which changes with 45 degree differences, is exactly what we want, we complete it by placing the second point. Once the initial sketch has been created, we can move the shape we have created anywhere we want on the canvas, either by dragging and dropping it with the mouse button, or by using the arrow direction keys on the keyboard. The primitive basic shape tools have a few presets in the size section, such as the pen, eraser, and brush tools, and the size settings are, of course, not limited to this. As promised, we will quickly show the thicknesses or all sizes of the line tool from 1 pixel to 50 pixels respectively, starting from the top left area of the canvas. To access more size options, with the shape tool selected, we increase its size with the key combination control and plus and decrease with the key combination control and minus. In an iterative step-by-step -step process, we show all thickness options or sizes in an accelerated way to save time. Our next basic shape tool is the curve tool. The curve tool helps us to produce a curved bent line. The logic for creating a curved line with the curve tool is similar to the basic straight line tool. After a level, the size will no longer increase. As we mentioned earlier, there is a size scale for size, from a minimum of 1 pixel to a maximum of 50 pixels. After defining the start and end points, we can additionally define two more bend directions, which we apply with the mouse buttons. With the curve tool, we can perform many different manipulations and 2D modeling techniques, addition, subtraction, and many other shaping operations. From special pencils or brushes, we can create outlines of basic primitive shape tools. We created the second curve with crayon and quickly started to create one sample after another. Our third example is the marker pen. And if you notice, when we extend a curve towards the other shape at the top, you can see that it is translucent. Finally, 
we create curves with oil paint, natural pencil, and then watercolor. In the shape section, after the line tools, another special tool that helps us create the shape we want is the polygon tool. With the polygon tool, we can create any polygon shape we want. First, we select the polygon tool, and with the left mouse button, we place the number of vertices we want the polygon to have on the canvas, and the edges in between will automatically form. To connect the last two points, we can overlap the start point and the end point and click. Or we can double click from where we are, and the shape will be automatically completed. Once our polygon shape is complete, if we have not clicked anywhere else on the canvas, we can resize the polygon shape. We create other polygon shapes with different brush and pencil styles to show inside our polygon shape. With the rectangular shape tool, we can create a square shape. To do this, hold down the shift key and use the left mouse button to stretch the shape to another distance and then release the left mouse button and the shape will form in the size and orientation you specified. We will show variations by creating square shapes with different brush and pencil styles for outline and fill. Whether outline or fill, the process we have done so far is the same as with the other shapes. We can quickly start showing examples of other primitive basic shapes. Once the first sketch of the shape has been created, click on it with the right mouse button and in the property window that opens, there are options to rotate the shape. We can also use basic primitive shapes to draw three-dimensional objects. We immediately create an example of a rectangular prism and cylinder drawing. In our previous brush tutorial, we talked about a special way to create a 3D effect or a special brush tip. Thanks to this method, we can use a shaped brush or shape as a stamping tool that marks our canvas. The method is quite simple. First, we choose one of the ready-made shape tools or basic line shapes and create it on canvas. When the background color is white, we create a copy of the shape with a transparent selection. When the background of the copied shape is transparent and selected, if we drag with the shift key pressed and the left mouse button pressed, it will automatically draw from one shape to another and fill them in close sequence. If we move the mouse fast, the distance between the shapes will widen. If we move it slowly, the distance will narrow. This process is similar to brush logic. In this way, we can develop different techniques to create special images and effects. Also, to draw one by one, when the background of the copied shape is transparent and selected, pressing the control key and pressing the left mouse button each time creates a stamp or the arrow direction keys can create a stamped shape right next to a unit. But this time, we will also add a few creature images from nature to inspire us with colors to better understand the subject. If we briefly mention our color tools, the first one is the color picker tool. With our color picker tool, we can select a color on the canvas and use it for drawing. My next color tools are color 1 and 2, so color 1 is the foreground color that we can usually use with the drawing tools directly with the left mouse button and represents the outline color for the shape section. The second color, background color, is used with the eraser tool or as a fill color for shapes. We have many ready-made colors in our color palette and we can assign them to our first or second colors. We can also edit the color palette and add new colors for this, we have the Edit Colors panel. We will talk about the Edit Colors panel in detail along with the other tools. First of all, as we mentioned, for a better understanding of the subject, we include a few images from the creatures in nature on our canvas to inspire us about colors. Notice that the creature images we added from nature to inspire us, such as birds and flowers, have many more colors than our ready-made color palette. When we hover over some of the colors in my color palette, we can see their names. Without wasting time, we open the Edit Colors panel to work with more colors. In the Basic Colors section of the Edit Colors panel, we can add more colors from our ready-made color palette or replace them with existing colors by selecting 
and confirming these or more. To show the first example, we choose three different colors in dark navy blue tones and include them in our color palette respectively and apply them with a brush for a clearer understanding on the canvas. In the left section of the Edit Colors panel, the RGB, red, green, blue, color model and its alternative HSL system, hue, saturation and luminance, both methods represent a given color according to their three basic criteria. In the RGB color system, one of three different color values ranges from 0 to 255. For the basic brilliant green color, green has a value of 255, while red and blue have a value of 0 and have a different numerical value in the HSL system. For the basic bright green color, the hue value can be represented by the numbers 80, saturation to 140, and brightness 120. We can select a color from the color map in the left section of the Edit Colors panel, or create the color by entering its numeric values in the RGB or HSL sections. Once we have created the color, we can confirm it and add or change it in the custom color panel or directly in the empty space in our color palette. Now we create the basic colors we will use, add them to our palette and then apply them to our canvas with a brush. By the way, the RGB color model, which we will talk about in more detail later, is an additive color model, and we quickly create a simple representation of it on our canvas. In the RGB color model system, red added to green produces yellow, green added to blue produces cyan, blue added to red produces magenta, and equally overlapping red, green, blue colors produce white. Next, we will talk about the CMYK color system and its differences with RGB. CMYK stands for four basic colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, or key, in print language, and these colors are the primary colors. These colors overlap in the print with the tram small ink dots method and form other intermediate colors. In theory, the mixture of the three colors should form black. But in practice, this is not the case. CMYK is a subtractive color model used in printing, and we will create a simple representation of this model on our canvas. We will sample the color transitions between cyan and yellow towards green. With a marker pen for this, we will use the color picker tool. With the color picker tool, we take a sample from each color intersection and intersect it again with the yellow color, thus obtaining many tones of green. We quickly apply the example we just made with an oil paint brush in more detail and over a wider range. In the second color blending and color gradient example, we use the color picker tool to select intermediate hues from red to yellow. We apply the watercolor brush step by step and each time different hues of orange emerge. In the next example of color mixing and color gradient, we again use the color picker tool to select the intermediate tones, this time creating a color transition from red to blue. We follow the same steps as before to obtain different hues of the color purple with the natural pencil, which has a different style. When the color picker tool is left clicked on a color on the canvas, it assigns the selected color to color one foreground color. But if right clicked, it assigns the selected color to color to background color. As an example of using the color picker tool in another way, we will be inspired by the creatures in nature that we transfer to our canvas. We hover over the birds, insects, and plants and sample the color pixels we want and apply them one below the other with a brush on the right side of our canvas.
We usually use the bucket tool to fill a specific area on the canvas with color, but it is also possible to change the color of the entire canvas. With the first color, also known as foreground color, we can change the color of the selected area. To do this, we hover over the area on the canvas with the bucket tool and click with the left mouse button. To fill it with the background color, the second color, we do the same operation, but this time with the right mouse button. With the foreground color black and the background color white, we will now use the bucket tool to paint the canvas first completely black and then white, and with a few repetitions we will have demonstrated the most general application of the bucket tool. We are going to design a very simple mandala template to show in a simple way what it's like to use the bucket tool to paint a specific area or shape instead of the whole canvas and what we can design with it. When designing a mandala, we first prepare a symmetrical base for the outlines, then create other shapes step by step to develop the design. Since the main lesson is about the bucket tool, in this lesson we show the mandala design process in an accelerated way. Of course, we plan to publish more different, more detailed and more sophisticated tutorials on mandala design in the future. Once we have created the outline of our clothes bin as a template, we will take a copy and move it to another area on the canvas and then fill it with various colors with the bucket tool. We start by choosing a different color for the background color on the canvas instead of white and changing the background color using the bucket tool. When assigning colors from the bucket tool, it accepts colors other than the specified color as limits. In other words, the bucket tool affects color pixels for all adjacent identical colors until another color arrives. Now, with the eraser, we erase some of the gray ring lines from the outline template so that they don't create borders or obstacles during color filling. Also, when we assign colors with the bucket tool, we remove some outlines so that they are not a boundary or barrier. We place the colors carefully and quickly in the areas we have determined. As we mentioned earlier, to assign a color to a specific area or change its color, we click with the left mouse button on the area on the canvas with the bucket tool selected. If we make a wrong paint fill, we can use the undo option or correct it with the bucket tool by reassigning the color to the same area. Instead of filling our mandala template completely, we filled only a part of it with the bucket tool in a time-lapse manner to serve as an example. When we hover over the selection and display tool section of the input panel, you can see that there are different types of selection tools. When we hover over them, short information boxes appear, briefly summarizing the function and purpose of the tools. You can see the rectangular selection, freeform selection, Select All, Reverse Selection, Delete Selection, and Transparent Selection Preferences. Transparent Selection makes transparent the parts of the selected area that are the same as the background color. Our background color, as we have shown in previous lessons, is our second color and we can change it. We have the Crop tool that helps us crop the selected area, which we will explore in detail in a moment. The other two tools are Resize and Rotate, which we use to resize or rotate the selected image. When we right-click on the canvas, with the Selection tool active, a shortcut panel of Selection tools appears right next to our cursor, from which we can select and use the same commands or tools. There is also a command to invert the color of the selected area or the entire canvas. The simplest definition of a color inversion command is that it changes the color from white to black, or black to white, or vice versa, whichever is the current color. For example, if the color is yellow, it turns it blue. When we apply the resize and rotate commands with the selection tool active and no image selected, it affects the entire canvas. We resize the canvas in half and then undo the process. Now, as a simple example, let's show you how to turn the canvas 90 degrees clockwise. Of course, it is possible to rotate in different angles or directions with rotation commands. The Select All command covers the entire area on the canvas.
If we select a specific area on the canvas and click the crop command, the area after the selected area is cropped and the rest is removed. Since we are doing these operations for demonstration, we undo the operation with the undo command. To better illustrate the same operation, let's invert the color of the selected area or even change its position on the canvas, transfer it to another area and crop it. We will now prioritize other selection, rotation and sizing commands and details over some ready-made shape tools. For this, we create a pointing arrow from the ready-made shape tools. When the ready-made up row shape we created is selected, we can move and resize it. With the rectangle selection tool, we can select the shape and move it anywhere on the canvas. If we execute the select all command, we can completely select the entire image on the current canvas and perform displacement and other operations on it. Another selection tool that we use frequently is the freeform selection tool, which is very simple to use. We define the boundaries of the selected area as if we were drawing with a pencil. We do this by holding down the left mouse button and the selection is automatically completed as soon as we release the left mouse button. We create a few more ready-made arrow shapes, different in color and size. When creating ready-made shapes, notice that our second color determines both the background color and the fill color. If the background color is different from the currently selected area, for example, here light gray, when we select the two ready-made shapes, we create it with free selection and then try to move them. The empty space behind them will automatically be filled with the current background color. We set the background color to white again. In this case, the white background color within the free selection area is also cut along with the selection, so you can see it covering other images as you move over them. To select and move the selected area without including the background color, we need to have transparent selection enabled. With the transparent selection feature active, we select again and you will be able to see the difference between the two selections more clearly. The transparent selection property changes the background color of the selection to transparent. The selection tools allow us to cut, divide and redesign in different sizes, and the rest is up to your imagination and creativity. With the copy command, we can duplicate a selected area, image or object by copying it. We can control a selected object or area with cut and paste operations, but each time the pasted position is in the upper left corner and we can then move this selected area wherever we want. As we mentioned before, we can completely remove a selected area with the delete command. We can use the keyboard shortcut keys, Ctrl plus C for copying and Ctrl plus V for pasting, which are used in many programs. Let's show the crop command one last time for a selected error image and undo the operation. We will apply the resize command to our selected arrow image. Resizing can be done while keeping the aspect ratio, or we can resize the aspect dimensions in percentages or pixels. It is also possible to resize only the amount of width or height or disproportionately without maintaining the aspect ratio. We can also resize the area selected for resizing by eye decision by dragging and dropping the selected area disproportionately from the side and top sides or diagonal corners in accordance with the aspect ratio. Apart from all this, it is possible to tilt the selected area horizontally or vertically and in degrees. In the rotation properties, we can rotate our shape horizontally or vertically with a single command. By making as many selections as we wish, we can perform image manipulation 
and transformation operations on the selected areas we have created. All this is limited by creativity and imagination. In line with what we have explained so far, we create a composition within the framework of the commands and operations we have shown quickly. And thanks to this quick explanation, the understanding of the subject will be further strengthened and facilitated. There is a huge paste icon in the clipboard section of the home panel. When we hover over it and click on the bottom section, we are presented with two different copy options. The first is the standard copy command, the basic copy command that copies any image or object selected on the canvas. However, the second copy command is a type of import command and imports an image file from outside the existing file. When we click on the paste from command, a small window will open that will help us find the directory and address of the file to be transferred. From there, we can select the address of the image file to be transferred and then open and transfer it. For example, we transfer a green themed wallpaper that is already on the desktop. We can cancel this action with the undo key. Unlike this method, we can easily open any image file on our computer with drag and drop. But remember that the existing file will be closed and we need to save it if it is a necessary work. If we have not made any changes to the image file we have opened, when we open another file with drag and drop, it does not give a file saving warning because there are no changes. The new file is opened directly and the old one is closed. When we dragged and dropped the desert themed wallpaper after the green themed forest image, we didn't make any changes and it was immediately replaced without any file save warning. In the same way, we opened another picture with a desert theme by drag and drop and did a few similar repetitions for better understanding. Now, we will more clearly demonstrate how to import an image file into the existing work from outside, that is the import, import from outside command. Once we have found the file directory or address, we can select and open the image file we want to transfer and add it to our current work. To the existing desert themed wallpaper, we add a different desert themed image file with a little more red color. This allows us to manipulate two separate image files as if they were a single image file, juxtapose them and perform various operations. We even manually expand our canvas size even further downwards and add another wallpaper image with a green waterfall theme. After manually cropping, we created a new image file from a collage-like combination of three different images. We can use the save or save as commands to export the newly created triple image from the inside, a kind of export. The save as or save as commands are available under the file menu where we specify the type of file to save or the type of image file to create. It is possible to export it by giving it a new name via Save As. In line with what we have explained so far, we create a composition within the framework of the commands and operations we have shown quickly. And thanks to this quick explanation, the understanding of the subject will be further strengthened and facilitated. By selecting the letter A, which symbolizes the text tool in the tools section, we can write the text we want anywhere on the canvas. With the text tool selected, we use the left mouse button to select the area on the canvas where we will enter the text. When the area to write text on the canvas becomes active, the Text Tools tab automatically appears above. In the Text Tools tab, we can specify many properties of typefaces, such as size, font, boldness, italics, underline and background. Although the ready-made text fonts are given values between 8 and 72, we can change the font size values by typing the numbers we want from the keyboard. If the font size value 
we enter is larger than the text field we set, it is possible to expand and adjust the text field later. Here, let's quickly show some basic typing tool features on a letter T. As you can see, apart from bold, italic, underline and center line, we can change the font as we like. We can change the background color of our text to any color, opaque or transparent. We can choose the colors of all or each of our typefaces individually as we wish. Here we have prepared a text example with many different colors to serve as an example. Unlike all these, the eraser tool has the ability to change the color of the text so we can design our text color in many different ways. In our previous lessons, we talked about the ability to change color in the eraser tool. For a better understanding, we recommend that you review our lessons on eraser. Thanks to the color changing feature of the eraser tool, it is possible to create designs with unlimited color painting and color variations even from a single typeface. We use the selection method to rotate and orient the text we write. In our tutorial on selection tools, we talked in more detail about how to rotate selected image objects or text, and we recommend that you watch the previous tutorial if you haven't already. After selecting the rotation operations with the selection tool, we can achieve the rotation effect by tilting the selected area vertically and horizontally under the basic rotation commands or indirectly under the resize menu. We can select the text we have created and use other manipulation tools to make some changes to them or delete them completely. The 3D lettering effect is a feature we have already discussed in detail in the brushes and shapes tutorial. To give the 3D effect, it is important that the selected text or object or character is a transparent selection. We can create a 3D or relief effect by first holding down the shift key on the keyboard and then moving the transparently selected text with mouse movements or with the arrow direction keys on the keyboard. Another important text effect is to completely cover our text with a pattern. To do this, we can import an external image file onto our canvas, which we will use as an overlay. Our first step is to import an external image file. We also recommend the previous tutorials where we went into detail about importing an external image file. Previous content always contributes to a better understanding of the topic. From the outside, we place a wallpaper with the theme of green dense leaved forest plants on our canvas and resize it. This time, we want to show it with a larger text, so we expand our canvas area with the mouse to provide a little more working space. We will then bring the canvas area back to its original size. On a blank part of the canvas, we wrote a text of our choice in one color and black, either by writing it or taking it from somewhere. We set the second color, our background color, to black and then enabled the transparent selection feature from the selection tools. With the transparent selection feature active, we select our text from the image file we imported from outside and align it as we want. Since the text part of our selection is transparent, the outer white area of the selection acts as a kind of mask so that our text automatically appears to be colored with the color of the area below it. Once our alignment is complete, we click on an empty space on the canvas to create our textured pattern text, deleting and removing unwanted or excess pieces. We design a similar example in a different writing style by transferring a different image file for better understanding in an accelerated way. As we mentioned earlier, the manipulation techniques that we can apply on canvas with selection tools and other tools 
and commands can also be used on text, including inverting colors. In line with what we have explained so far, we create a composition within the framework of the commands and operations we have shown quickly. And thanks to this quick explanation, the understanding of the subject will be further strengthened and facilitated. One of the most basic tools you can see in the Primitive Shape Tools section is the Line Tool, and the other is the Curve Tool. With these two basic tools, you can derive all other shapes. If we want to create angle differences of 45 degrees, it is enough to hold shift and move in the desired direction before the second point after the first point is set. To create a curved tool, place the origin on the canvas with the left mouse button. Then, with the second point, the line is extended to a more distant point on the canvas to determine its length and direction. The curved line tool has the basic features of the straight line tool which we have already explained in detail in shapes, but here we will highlight its more functional features. We can choose the thickness of our line or curve shape from the available sizes or with the shape tool selected. We can increase its size with the key combination control and plus and decrease it with the key combination control and minus to access more size options. In the last step, after defining the start and end points, we can define two additional bend directions by pulling with the left mouse button on the distant points and directions on the canvas. To create a closed oval shape with the curve tool, we can set the start point and then drop the end point right next to it and bend it to create a closed curve shape. We can also change the outline brush or pen properties of our curve tool as we wish. Here we will quickly show you different examples from oil painting to marker pen or solid color and even styles like watercolor brush. So far, we have refreshed our knowledge on the creation and basics of the curve tool. And now we will do a few practical examples of its functional use. Using the curve tool, we will try to show step by step a very simple fast design and for this we will place a copy of the stages side by side in sequence. Notice that we use the select tool, copy and paste and horizontal rotation to save time and achieve symmetry. We also design some vase lines asymmetrically to make a difference. As this is not an example of vase design, or vase decoration, we have focused on the functionality of the curve tool with an example as simple as possible. Of course, the limit of your designs is limited by your imagination and design skills in direct proportion to the effort and time you will give. Let's extend the first part of the tutorial on drawing a closed curve a little more functionally and create a square with a quarter pattern. We duplicate this quarter pattern with copy and paste and combine symmetrically and in four directions to create one large pattern. Finally, since we have already selected the lines other than the curves in grey, we will remove them by turning them white at once with the bucket tool. We will also show the stages of this basic application side by side to create a simple pattern curve. To free up space on our canvas, we rearrange the position of the drawings we have prepared with the selection tools and save them. In the free space on the canvas, we will try to draw a simple figure of a happy smiling cat in cartoon style using the sketch method. Since we will focus on the expression of the cat with the sketches, we only express the head and part of the body with vague lines instead of the whole cat. Since our main goal here is not to explain how to draw a cat, we will focus on how we can functionally place curves as outlines in our sketches and create a smoother silhouette or drawing. In the sketches, we drew in light grey. We can now create curvilinear outlines with black and a thicker line size. 
When designing curved lines, we don't go into too much detail, but create clear outlines. After saving the scene, we rearrange the position and size of the drawings we designed. We place a small copy of our cat drawing in front of it. This time, we will edit the cat drawing in a smaller version so that only the outline curved lines remain. To remove the sketch lines, we remove the gray line step by step by changing the size of the eraser tool with the color change feature of the eraser tool as we have shown in our previous lessons. The photo of the Felix cat sketch we drew with a real pencil on a real paper is on desktop. We will prepare this sketch photo in MS Paint for the image tracing we will do in a moment. The easiest way to do this is to drag and drop it into the Open MS Paint program, or you can also open it from the File options. Whether it's drawings you've made on real paper or surfaces, or drawings or images you've created or acquired digitally, we can use the Trace to Image method in MS Paint for all of them. The choice is entirely up to you. You can apply the tracing method to any image or painting or photo image that you can open in MS Paint. Here we will use the Felix Cat trials that we have already drawn on paper. We decide on one of the drawings in the photo, select it with the free selection tool, and then crop it with the crop command. First, we enlarge the canvas area to make it easier to work on the selected drawing. We have provided enough space, and in the next step we enlarge the drawing itself with resize commands. We will use the curve tool to manually trace the drawing to reveal the outline. With the curve tool, we can emphasize curved and bent lines more beautifully. Before that there is a problem that we have to mention. Our current drawing photo is very dark because it was taken without enough light. And the whites are not light white and there are also very dark colors close to black. So when we choose the black color, the colors will blend together and it will be hard to distinguish. Here we will try an alternative technique for the solution. We will place a rectangular white shape filled with a marker pen as a layer on top of the drawing image to brighten and whiten the image in MS Paint. In this way, the rectangular mask, half light and half filled with a transparent marker pen, will lighten and whiten all dark colors by several degrees. With this translucent white mask, it will now be easier and more distinguishable to see a black colored drawing on the image. We erased the other parts of the canvas that needed to be erased and started tracing the drawing with the curve tool. We thickened it a bit so that our lines would be distinct. We have previous content explaining the detailed and basic use of the curve tool. Please watch that content first so that you can understand this and subsequent content more effectively and completely. Using the step-by-step -step image tracing, we started outlining our drawing with the curve tool. If you pay attention, you will notice that we occasionally make mistakes in presenting these steps in an accelerated way. But this is not a problem because there are many ways to undo errors, especially using shortcuts to undo and pick up where we left off. When using the curve tool, if we have made a mistake during the creation phase, clicking the right mouse button will be enough to cancel the error. But if we have created our drawing incorrectly, we use the undo option to cancel the drawing. We undo with our favorite key combination, Ctrl plus Z, which we explained in more detail in previous tutorials. Once our outlines are complete, we run the Invert Colors command. 
The invert colors command will automatically change our blackest outline to white for a clearer color separation in the next step. Save the current scene as a backup and open the properties options under the file menu. In the feature options, we choose between color and black and white format. In image files converted to black and white format, the gray areas outside the black and white disappear so that the outline of our drawing appears cleanly. When we get to this stage, we take another backup and change the color properties from black and white to color. And of course on the canvas, with the invert colors command, we revert our outline lines from white back to the original black color. Using the bucket tool, we fill in the necessary colors in the required areas. Now, we can move on to the detailed part. We want some lines to look sharper, so we shape the lines with the curve tool using contrasting colors. We change the position of the drawing we created to save space on our canvas. And finally, we take screenshots on canvas of the important steps we have taken up to this point. In fact, MS Paint does not have a separate layer feature like Photoshop, Kim, or Krita. Here, we will only try to implement the layer logic in the most primitive and simple way on MS Paint in alternative ways. Working layer by layer will provide us with great convenience and manageability in our drawing and painting. With the method we will use, we will apply four layers. The first one is orange to other shades of grey light and dark, and finally a black layer. You can use more or less layers if you wish. We will make a simple drawing of a cat's head. In our first layer, we will align and define the cat's head with the most simple and primitive geometric shapes. We chose orange as the color of our first layer to differentiate it from the other layers and make it stand out. Since the cat's face will be looking directly at us, we will design a drawing close to symmetry. To help ensure symmetry, we use the line tool to create a simple linear straight line base similar to a coordinate line. We place the ellipse, one of the primitive basic shapes, thinking of the usual boundaries of the head and centering the lines. This time we draw an exact circle to mark the cat's mouth area and place it appropriately. So, our first layer is ready. For the second layer, we will try to draw the silhouette of the cat's head in a light grey colour with the thinnest pencil tool. On the second layer, the aim is to roughly draw the shape with the first lines. We won't go into too much detail yet. After our second completed layer, we can start the third layer to correct errors and enter details. To make our lines a little more defined, we work with a darker grey colour and increase the thickness of our lines. In the third layer, the aim is to emphasise the shape a little more and to remove errors. The final version will be defined in contour lines. Our third layer is now complete, and the last layer, layer 4, is the layer where we will create the outline lines with the curve tool. In our previous tutorials, we have published tutorials about the curve tool and image tracing. You can find more details in our previous tutorials. We can start removing the sketch lines because now our outlines are ready and complete. There are three different ways to remove sketch lines layer by layer or in bulk. The first method is the change color feature of the eraser tool, which we have shown in many previous tutorials. 
with the color change feature of the eraser tool. Layer by layer, color by color, we change the selected color to the background color. The second method is the method of filling and deleting the relevant color within a certain area boundary with the bucket tool. We can call this the color changing feature of the bucket tool. And you can find the details of this topic in our previous lessons. In the first two methods, if you don't pay attention to the details, there may be residues that are forgotten, but they are not difficult to solve. It is enough to examine them a little more carefully. The last method, method three, is a multi-step method that helps us remove all colors except black and white, which we explained in detail in our previous image tracking tutorial. Unfortunately, MS Paint does not have a separate and detailed gradient color rendering feature or effect like Photoshop, GIMP, or Krita. Here we will try to show alternative ways to create gradient colors in MS Paint. First, we will share a few practical examples that will form the basis of the gradient color rendering techniques. The first example we will give is an illustration of how an arbitrary doodle image can be selected and resized, collapsed and expanded into long strips. We made random scribbles with the pen tool, then selected the selection tool and narrowed it all the way in the vertical direction. The narrow shape has almost disappeared or has reached the size of one pixel, after which we stretch the shape by expanding it in the vertical direction. We also try this technique with different color groups and brush options. Notice that when we increase the amount of color and use different brush options, there is a slight gradient effect between the colors. We copy part of the fragment showing the effect of the color transition from blue to light blue and expand it further on a free space of the canvas. The expanding image fragment is initially composed with a maximum of three blue colors, but thanks to the transitions between them, dozens of light blue tones can be seen expanding and multiplying with a gradient effect. Now that we have given the basic technique, we will show in a more comprehensive and specific way how to apply a larger and more uniform gradient color effect across the entire canvas. We start by cleaning the canvas, recording the stage we have reached. The first example we will do is to create a gradient effect of three basic colors. We create the colors black, light orange and yellow diagonally across the canvas in different proportions with the help of the shape tools and the bucket tool. The next stage is the resizing stage where we first reduce the pixel value to one pixel on the horizontal axis in pixels and without preserving the aspect ratio. We restore our image, reduced to one pixel on the horizontal axis to its original size without aspect ratio, that is 3840 pixels on the horizontal axis. You can see that the colors in the image automatically create a gradient effect by blending with each other in certain proportions as it narrows and expands on the horizontal axis. Basically, it is possible to create gradient effects within this logic. The basic logic is based on the color transition effect that occurs when two or more colors intersect, contract and expand. We will help you reinforce the topic with multiple examples in different colors and proportions. Since the operations we perform are the same or similar to the previous ones, we create multiple instances on the same basis in an accelerated way. Now, we can align and present the many instances 
we have created on a single canvas. You can see that by inverting the colors of some gradient color studies, we can get different color transitions. In MS Paint, we have multiple methods and techniques for mixing two or more colors together, and we will demonstrate them hands-on in turn. The first method is to spray the selected colors with a spray can brush layer by layer, one after the other and gradually. The color scale we will choose will be within the dark and light tones of red colors. As a first step, we transfer the colors we will determine from the Edit Colors panel to our palette respectively. In our previous tutorials, we have provided detailed examples and explanations about colors and the Edit Colors panel. If you want to learn more, it is useful to review previous trainings. With the spraying method, we achieved a color transition from dark to light, a subtle, faint blending effect between colors. And to make it more pronounced, we superimposed the copy of the sample we created on top of the other like a layer. We use the oval tool to cut a full circle from the color blend we created and change the transparent selection property and background colors. We made similar examples when we discussed brushes and here we will develop the example a bit further. We achieve the color transition from red to yellow with an oil paintbrush and by gradually mixing the intermediate colors. With the selection tool, we selected this newly created color blend. We create an example of a gradient effect by resizing the selection or manually collapsing and expanding it with the technique described in the gradient tutorial. By using different colors with different brushes, we can get more and more varied mixtures. Although the blending effect of each brush is generally similar, each brush has its own unique differences. We mix three different colors side by side to get intermediate colors and blends from indigo blue and light blue tones to light green, and we can select the intermediate colors between each blend with the color picker tool. As in the previous example, here we make an example of a gradient effect. In fact, the gradient effect is a color blending, a color mixing technique we have explained with detailed examples in our previous lessons on gradient. This tutorial includes a large gradient color creation example, which will also be included in the color mixing example. We record our progress and clean our canvas. Diagonally, one after the other, we create a total of six colors from yellow to orange to red, including purple and blue. Then, using the gradient subtraction technique, we reduce it to one pixel without preserving the aspect ratio and expand it back to its normal size. Here is a new example of gradient color mixing. Finally, we display all these examples in sequence on a single canvas. For background removal and decoupage, we will use a screenshot of our desktop or paper as material. You can erase, crop and decoupage the background of any image or photo using the techniques we'll show you. After taking a screenshot, we placed it on our canvas with the selection tool. Since MS Paint does not have an external layer system, we expand our canvas horizontally to save space. We focus on the white chess pawn knight in the center of our wallpaper and create a copy with a rough selection of rectangles 
but we could have done without the backup. Since we are showing it here for teaching purposes, and we will show it both through copies and by comparing multiple methods, we will try to explain it step by step through copies. The first method we will demonstrate is to selectively separate the image from the background with the freeform selection tool. We have proportionally increased the size of the image with resizing to show it better and closer and to work in detail. With the freeform selection tool, we can separate the image from the background with a single selection. But working in detail and being able to check for possible errors and proceeding step by step gives more flexibility and avoids a possible error and total waste of time and effort. In a sense, it is a divide and conquer process. In the process, it is important to approach the image to be chosen and define the borders precisely. The more careful and attentive it is chosen, the cleaner the result will be. If you did it a bit fast, like we did, you can use brush tools at the end to touch up and file up the excess. In fact, the most practical method is to use the bucket tool to eliminate the monochrome background using color differences. Unfortunately, it is not possible here. If you notice, there are too many intermediate tones in our piece. So this procedure is not suitable for this work. Some of the techniques we covered in our image tracking methods tutorial are also useful here for background removal and decoupage. With the line tool and the curve tool, we draw the image at its borders and then with the freeform selection tool, we can remove it in a much more practical and less inaccurate way. Another version of the method we have just shown is to apply a mask method to separate the outlined image from the background in one go. For this method, it is necessary to apply the first parts of the first method. Therefore, we will be explaining the continuation of the process in practice with the copy we have taken from the video surveillance. We will go over the contrasting colors that we use in image tracking so that those who watched a previous lesson will understand this lesson much more effectively. In the previous image tracking tutorial, we set our outline to black. In this case, the black color contrasts very well with the outline background color and is therefore very appropriate. With the bucket tool, we immediately change the outline colors to black. The next operation is to invert the colors. To remove all shades of gray and other colors other than black and white, we change the color properties in the far menu from color format to black and white format and save the resulting outline drawing by cropping the shape. After all these actions, we reopen the record of our work from the previous phase. In this case, we import our outline figure image created by cropping the work. We invert the colors of the imported chestnut pawn mask figure. After making sure that the transparent selection feature is active, we make a selection with the second color white, that is, the background color white, and place it like a mask on the image whose background we want to delete. In the last step, we use the bucket tool to change the color of the mask area from a single black color to white so that the background is completely cleared. When decoupage with masking, we can also use the primitive basic shape tools in combination with other methods. For example, after defining the boundaries of an image fragment, that is a complete circle in the image with the oval tool, we can separate it from the background in a similar way to what we did in the last example, but in an even simpler way. Because the mask of this image fragment can be easily created by combining two basic shapes, As a general summary, we organize our canvas to show all the stages and methods we have gone through up to this point on a single canvas. In this tutorial, we create an example of a gradient background from red to yellow in flame tones 
to help you understand the content more easily. If you want to learn more, you can watch our gradient tutorial. As we mentioned earlier, in fact, MS Paint does not have a separate layer feature, like Photoshop, YIMP, or Krita. Here, we will only try to implement the layer logic in the most primitive and simple way on MS Paint in alternative ways. Working layer by layer will provide us with great convenience and manageability in our drawing and painting and masking. In a sense, we can think of this background design gradient color as layer 1, or layer 2 if we count the white background. We minimized and made a copy of the red to yellow gradient layer we created and then inverted its colors. And if you notice, we have another example of a blue toned gradient. We set the background color of the empty part of our canvas as black to create a mask. To create a mask, it is enough to use two contrasting colors. The important thing is that these two contrasting colors do not mix as much as possible with the surface to be applied. You can also use green, pink, or any shade of gray. Since we are going to create a mask with a black background color, we need to use white shapes and lines. And of course, it is important that our second color, the overall background color, is white. Another very important issue is that area selection is done in a transparent manner. For demonstration purposes, we created a group of mask shapes from primitive ready-made shapes, selected them with transparent selection, and applied them to gradient colored surfaces as a mask layer. We have explained this process in the previous training content about decoupage and background removal. If you have not watched it, we strongly recommend you to watch it. Now we have expanded our canvas area from the side to create a more complex mask shape. We will create a simple flame image, make it into a mask layer, and apply it as a mask layer on gradient surfaces. We apply our masks in different sizes and scales and on different gradient color surfaces. The layer mask application you create here is limited by your imagination and design skills. In our text training content, we have presented examples of layer mask application in a sense. We can create different designs with a text mask that we will create again over the gradients we have created here. Of course, we can also create a more complicated layer mask. For example, we could create a triangular mask with a gradient blue flame icon inside and another design applied on a red background. As mentioned earlier, the layer mask application you create here is limited by your imagination and design skills. Finally, we summarize all this work by collecting our canvas. There are four different image files that we keep on the desktop to turn it into pixel art. The first one is a simple umbrella drawing. We drag and drop the simple umbrella drawing into MS Paint, which is already open. Then select the whole image and gradually minimize it by pressing the control and minus keys. It is important to note that each time the image is minimized, the number of pixels is reduced by simplifying the image without preserving the number of pixels. When you press control and plus and gradually enlarge the image again, you will notice that the initial pixel density of the image has decreased and it has become more simplified and pixelated. In fact, pixel loss and new pixel intensification during resizing in MS Paint is a disadvantage, while a feature like pixelization can be considered an advantage. There is an inverse correlation between the level of pixelization and the preservation of the original characteristics of the image, as pixelization increases, many pixels and colors become fewer and simpler, 
resulting in a new pixel density. So much, so that if you try to the last level, you may end up with a few pixels when you enlarge it again. No matter the type of image or resolution, you can turn any image into pixel art by pixelizing it. We import four different versions of the pixelized umbrella drawing onto a new clean canvas. In the same way, we transfer the other three images on the desktop to the canvas to pixelize them. For pixelization, we can perform the same operations on multiple images on a single canvas. We can pixelize them all at once or select them in order and pixelize them again. We pixelize the simple pineapple drawing by resizing it as in the umbrella example. As we mentioned before, it doesn't matter if the image we choose to pixelize is a drawing or a real photo. We can use this method for any image. Our next exercise is to pixelize a photo of a cherry. However, after a certain stage, we reinforce the thin cherry stem with brushes or line tools to compensate for the loss due to pixelization and then pixelize it again. As can be seen, after a certain stage, the pixelization process was successfully performed to reconstruct the image into equal artificial square pixels and fill in the missing parts. We can manipulate the image file that we are going to pixelize, fill in the missing parts and make unlimited changes during the pixelization phase and then intervene as we wish. Following the same step-by-step -step process, we pixelize the cropped green race car photo in several stages. Finally, we summarize all this work by collecting our canvas. We quickly create a design as a desktop wallpaper. The main topic of this tutorial is not about designing wallpaper, but about how to set and change wallpaper in MS Paint or how to make the necessary adjustments. In future trainings, we will have comprehensive trainings on how to make custom wallpaper or concept designs and drawings. In this tutorial, we will focus on how to quickly and simply set existing drawings or photo images and wallpaper images as desktop backgrounds. We crop our logo-like design characterized by the letter A and select Set as Desktop Background under the File menu. The Set as Desktop Background section offers three different placement options. The first is Fill, which fills the entire screen with an image, and the second is Tile, which fills the entire screen with an image in a repeating pattern. The last option is Center, which places the image in the center of the screen. For demonstration purposes, we will apply each one and show the differences. The Fill option, which fills the entire screen with the image, is not compatible with the current image we selected. The pixel amount did not match the pixel amount requested by the desktop background, so it did not provide a suitable wallpaper in terms of layout, with pixelation and blurring. The Center option, which places the image in the center of the screen, did not distort the image in terms of pixel quality. However, it remained quite small in the center of the screen due to the small size of the image, but it certainly looks neater than the first option. Since our goal is to show, let's try the other options in turn and decide which one is the most suitable for the image at hand. The tile option, which fills the whole screen with a picture with a repeating pattern, Again, did not spoil the image in terms of pixel quality and layout. A kind of repeating pattern effect, maybe with different designs. This option would have looked better. We actually have an image with a repeating pattern that we keep on the desktop. The chessboard pattern has the potential for a harmonious and infinitely repetitive pattern that, when stacked and juxtaposed, complements each other without any seams or joints. Let's set the chessboard pattern with the tile option and all other options and quickly show it.
Finally, we will show a real nature photo with three different options with Banner Blueprint, our own YouTube channel template that we designed as wallpaper. As we have shown, we have tried three different options to set some images or photos as wallpaper compatible with the pixel density and aspect ratio they have. Some of these options are quite suitable for wallpaper, while others are not compatible with the respective option and desktop background due to pixel density and aspect ratio. You can open any photo, drawing or any image file in MS Paint and set it as a desktop background with the step-by-step -step methods we describe with the possibility to make the changes you want. Up to this tutorial, we have shown you many shortcuts. Some of them are basic shortcuts that can be found in any program. These shortcuts included shortcut options based on control and corresponding key combinations for copy and paste and delete or save. There are more MS Paint specific shortcuts and external shortcuts that we will cover in detail in this tutorial. To make program specific shortcuts visible and active, we press the up key on the keyboard. If you pay attention, you will notice that capital letters appear above the menus. A shortcut key information appears with H next to the home menu and V above the view menu segment. When we press the out key and then the H key, the home menu will become active and all the relevant shortcuts under the subheading will become visible. Note that the shortcut description text boxes on menu symbols or icons become visible when we hover over them with the mouse cursor and wait for a while. For some commands, the shortcut is defined by more than one letter, but alternative shortcuts are also available. For example, the resize option can be activated with the key combination control plus W or out plus H plus R and plus E. The keyboard key combination Alt plus H and T can be used to create text. While clicking on a menu with the mouse cursor and executing a command is actually the fastest option. Shortcuts can sometimes be practical, but usually no more than two key combinations are practical. So, why are there so many key combinations that are not shortcuts? The answer to this question is tantamount to the identity of MS Paint because although it is a very old and well-established software, it is simple and old school. When MS Paint was designed, it also had features that allowed you to draw with just the keyboard, even if you didn't have a mouse at the point of drawing. Of course, in order not to take up too much time, instead of sharing in detail how to draw with the keyboard, we will use a simple example. The space bar can replace the left mouse button in MS Paint, and even the directional keys on the keyboard can be used for cursor movements. As a result, it is possible to perform almost every operation and drawing in MS Paint without using the mouse at all just the keyboard. Although some of these features provide convenience in some operations, they are generally idle and not preferred. In this tutorial, we will try to explain step by step how to switch from MS Paint to Paint 3D and how to edit with Paint 3D in the most practical way. To get the most out of this training, following this content and our previous and subsequent or other related trainings that we publish in series will help you understand and achieve much more. We open MS Paint 
and start with a clean and blank canvas with a white background color. Paint 3D is a raster graphics and 3D modeling application that is a revamp of Microsoft Paint. In a moment, we will show you how to switch from the already open MS Paint to Paint 3D and how to use advanced editing tools with Paint 3D in the most practical way. We hover over the Microsoft Paint 3D icon and see a brief description of Edit with Paint 3D in the description text. We open the program by clicking on the icon or we can access it by typing the program name from the start menu. As soon as we open the program, we are greeted with a welcome message. If we want, we can uncheck it so that the welcome screen does not appear. In the welcome section, there are options to start a new project or start an existing project. And we also have the ability to import 2D or 3D works from outside. There are two introductions on the welcome screen. Some of the new tools have been presented, of course. We quickly skip these, but we strongly recommend you to watch them. The library and menus with ready-made 2D and 3D assets, the new brushes, the practical intuitive user-friendly interface of the menus will attract you. Here, we will quickly present you just a few of the new layouts and advanced tools or features. You will be able to access all of them, in our detailed systematic and comprehensive list of Microsoft Paint 3D tutorials on our channel. For old and nostalgic users, we will also continue our content on classic MS Paint. Once you learn or get used to the new Microsoft Paint 3D drawing software, you will realize that it is a great design tool with a user-friendly interface that offers you the possibilities and flexibility of new editing tools. Whether you are an artist or just want to doodle, Microsoft Paint 3D is a great help to unleash your creativity and bring your ideas to life. The classic MS Paint is back with an updated look that gives you even more control over drawing and design and, of course, with advanced new features. With tons of new brushes and image editing tools, you can now create things of any size. And not just 2D drawings, you can now create 3D models that you can play with and edit from any angle. Yes, we have come to the end of this training content. If you haven't seen it, we recommend you to watch the previous and subsequent trainings of the series. We will continue the series with more beautiful trainings and we will be with you again very soon. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications for new videos. See you again soon and thanks for watching.